Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, allow me to begin by thanking President Volkan Bashkir for the invitation to address the General Assembly on this important issue. I'd also like to convey my appreciation to the High Representative Azumi Nakamitsu for her remarks on behalf of the Secretary General of the United Nations. It is a pleasure to share this podium today, including with speakers from my own region, from the Asia Pacific region, with Sue uh, Coleman Hasseldine from Australia, and then also um, with a member from the Marshall Islands. This issue is very important to the Asia Pacific region. As we commemorate this important day, it is essential that we continue to listen to the voices of those that have been affected by the tragic consequences of nuclear testing. 30 years ago, as we've already heard, the first president of the Republic of Kazakhstan, Nusultan Nazarbayev, signed a decree closing the semi-Palantinsk nuclear test site, known as the Polygon, a bold and visionary act. But two weeks ago, I stood at one of the ground zeroes in semi-Palantinsk. It was a sobering experience. With more than 450 nuclear tests conducted at the Polygon, and a total explosive yield equivalent to 2,500 Hiroshima bombs, the scope of the impact on human health and the environment may never be fully understood. Yet for the communities affected by exposure to nuclear tests, there and at other nuclear test sites around the world, including in my own country, the pain and anguish is representative of the sad legacy of an era of unrestrained nuclear testing. But let us also not lose sight of the even greater suffering and loss that would result from a nuclear war, which would tear apart every shred of our collective humanity. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, or CTBT, is a non-proliferation and a disarmament objective that was decades in the making. It was negotiated with the aim of pulling the world back from the nuclear precipice and putting us on a stable path towards the elimination of this most destructive force conjured by humankind. The CTBT is a success story, even though it has not yet become legally binding. Since its opening for signature 25 years ago this month, there has been near universal adherence to the norm against nuclear testing that's underpinned by this treaty. With 185 state signatories and 170 ratifying states, support for the treaty continues to grow. However, the only way to put in place an enduring and a verifiable prohibition on nuclear testing is through the entry into force and universalization of the CTBT. The promise of a world without nuclear weapons is not possible unless the international community comes together on this important cause. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the CTBT has proven to be an effective measure for nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament. But we cannot rest easy on the successes of yesteryear. We must acknowledge that our work is not yet fully done, and we must do all we can to bring the treaty into force and to complete its verification regime. Let us commit together to ensuring that the world never again suffers from the disastrous consequences of nuclear testing, to reducing nuclear risk and preventing nuclear war, and building a safer and more secure world for future generations by taking concrete actions to advance nuclear non-proliferation and disarmament. We can achieve these noble goals 
by taking every opportunity to advance the entry into force and universalization of the CTBT. In so doing, we will have demonstrated that the promise of a nuclear weapons-free world is within our reach. Thank you.